Welcome to the 21st century, an era beyond the wildest dreams of even our most recent ancestors, the age of the computers. And the architects of this age? Computer scientists. A very esteemed and important position to hold when they quite literally define the 21st century human interactions. But what do these architects look like? Who are they? Let's use another daily engine that defines human interaction, Google. A quick Google search of words like programmer and coder yields very interesting results. Now, I doubt these results will be of any particular surprise to anyone, but let's do it anyway. Well, it doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out the common thread here. The images of our 21st century architects are overwhelmingly those of men. Raise your hands if this Google search took you by surprise. Exactly. These images are what we are accustomed to, and to some degree, even expect. Now, these expectations can prove to be incredibly pervasive and harmful. Equating the idea of being a programmer with being a man has direct and damning consequences. Women are simply not thought of as viable contenders. This bias is internalized by women and girls who are constantly confronted by images, public perception, and media portrayals of programming being exclusively masculine, with dire effects, of course. I would like to direct your attention to the first five rows in this auditorium, in that section. That is it. Only 20% of computer science professionals are women. With the technology boom, you would expect that this number has gone up, right? In fact, the opposite has happened. In the past decade, there has been a decrease in the female share of computer science degrees from 23% to a mere 18%. We need more women in tech. We need them to have a seat at the table in such an expanding industry. The million dollar question to ask here is why? Why do girls not code? Why is there such a stark gender disparity? This is not an easy question to answer. It's uncomfortable to confront and asks us to rewire deeply internalized biases. I was just 13 when I was recruited by my school's computer club, Minette, at the Mothers International School. An incredibly exciting and amazing opportunity at that time. I mean, my programming skills were being recognized by our school computer club. But soon I got to know that the reason they recruited me was because they wanted a female programmer in their all-male cadet to make the club look more inclusive and diverse. This knowledge made everything very hard and uncomfortable for me. I did not feel like I belonged. I didn't think my voice would be heard or appreciated. So I stopped speaking because of the fear of being ignored. I had cleared the interviews, I had done the programming questions, I had really deserved my space there. Still, knowing that I was recruited with just one criterion fulfilled made me question everything. The computer science club was a sea of opportunities that I could not dive into. There were so many club night outs, hackathons, and competitions that I couldn't be part of because of reasons that the male members would never understand. I mean, how could I go to them and say that, no, I can't attend this DPS RKP amazing tech competition just because I can't take an auto at 5 p.m. and go to my home because at such an early age? India is an unsafe country for women. That is no shocking news, right? And at the few events that I did attend, I felt completely out of place. I was the only girl there, and it was almost as if everyone expected me to fail. Yet, I worked with my strengths, I honed my skills and I just did whatever I could. And I'm proud to say that I rose up to be the programming executive of that very same club. Since then, I have not looked back. I got a scholarship to study my grades 11th and 12th in Singapore, where I dabbled in machine learning. In fact, my research in machine learning was just published last year in the Asian Conference of Machine Learning. And now I'm a second year undergraduate at the Ontario Tech University in Canada on a full scholarship and I'm continuing my research about the COVID-19 pandemic and ways to leverage machine learning to control disease spread. I've always been fascinated with computers. The fact that we humans can communicate with these brilliant, sophisticated machines in ones and zeros 
blows my mind. My love for computer science and programming has been a lifelong affair. But for the longest time, I thought this was an unreciprocated one. I was told I could never know enough or be good enough to be a programmer. The dismissals and condescension were unrelenting. But I knew I loved computers. I knew I could understand them, appreciate them. The fact that I could solve complex problems with simple lines of code was surreal to me. So somehow, because of this love and appreciation, I persevered. The girl who was told she could never know enough or be good enough to be a programmer is now the lead computer science tutor of her university's engineering tutoring center. And I see the delightful irony in that. I'm also proud to say that I am nearing the finish line of my software engineering degree. I've done research, I've been an undergraduate teaching assistant, and now I can very confidently say that I've deepened this mutual and reciprocated love affair with computer science. Standing before you now, you can see that we both have made a lot of progress. We have overcome hurdles, we have overcome challenges. But this has been no easy journey. And the main question to ask here is why? Why are girls confronted with so many obstacles when it comes to them joining tech? That's the question two 16-year-olds struggling with their CS journeys asked each other. A simple word. Why? This was followed by another. How do we change this? As two bright-eyed, optimistic teenagers, we decided to undertake the very unambitious goal of rewiring the gender gap in tech, one workshop at a time. The Girl Code was born out of this desire to create a community and affect real world change. We wanted to create something that would have helped us, a model that would actually work and encourage girls to take up computer science and thrive in the CS world. The idea sounded very shiny and exciting for like two bright eyed 16 year old girls. The implementation, not so much. We had so many obstacles to overcome before we could get the ship off the ground. And the first hurdle was like, where do we host these workshops? Delhi is an unsafe city and parents would think twice and even thrice before sending their daughters to seemingly random and weird places. After days of scratching our heads over this issue, we finally came up with an answer. The schools and the universities local to these girls, right? This arrangement not only addresses parental concern, but also provides a very nurturing, familiar, and safe environment for girls to grow and learn in. We built our organization's model around community, confidence, and curiosity, which very luckily for us is a perfect alliteration. With community, the idea was to foster a supportive collective of female programmers, peers who would help each other and support each other in their learning and exploration. Confidence, while seemingly self-explanatory, is perhaps the most important. At The Girl Code, we don't just aim at teaching girls how to code, but instilling in them the confidence that they can indeed code, or do whatever it is that they set their minds to. Last, but not least whatsoever, is curiosity, the cornerstone of science and innovation, essential to properly learn or pursue any field or subject. So the plan was simple. We would get 25 to 30 girls from our school to participate in a two-day Python bootcamp. You would think, right, that 12-year-old girls from a very privileged school in India's capital would be relatively unaffected by the sexist dogma that plagues large majority of this country, right? No, that was not the case. The insidious and pervasive nature of internal biases was never more apparent than when I was trying to rouse participation for this workshop. Every class that we went to announce, hands shot up, and we were so excited that the idea was reaching actualization, only to realize that the guys were clamoring to participate while the girls even hesitated to look our way. Now, I would like you to take a second and pay, important to this, uh, pay attention to this very important incident. Why was one group so eager to participate while the other was so shy and didn't even think it was a viable field for them to explore? Neither group had any experience in computer science, yet the polar responses were very much divided along gender lines. 
days passed without even one sign up. We were disheartened and were about to give up before we decided to give it one last pitch in the morning assembly. That couldn't hurt, right? I mean, we all were already at zero sign-ups. What could go wrong? So we did that. And the response was overwhelming. Girls were approaching us all over the foyer to register. That day, I had an epiphany that these girls, all they needed was a small nudge from a female role model. And that we're stuck in a vicious cycle where seeing less representation of your gender in tech reduces your inclination to go into it. Over the course of the bootcamp, the incredibly hesitant participants blossomed into fearsome, confident warriors, unafraid to break barriers and spread the word. In fact, two of them went on to join the school's computer club and one even won a medal in a CS Olympiad. Can you imagine? A week ago, those girls were uncertain about even attending a computer science workshop. So clearly, it's not a matter of skill or interest. It's a systemic lack of belief that girls can pursue computer science and that it is a viable option for them. In the three years since, we have hosted loads and loads of workshops to similar results. Getting participation is still the hardest point that we face, but it always ends with a very warm and inspiring experience for the hundreds of girls that, that discover the joys of programming with the Girl Code. We have now put a special emphasis to make this power accessible to the remotest and the most underprivileged areas in India. We're proud to lay claim to collaborations with NGOs like Saksham Center and the Tara community in Rajasthan. Suction Center teaches underprivileged uh, girls in their area and Tara community shelters girls who have been affected, uh, uh, affected of sexual abuse or are, or are a part of the POXO Act. I'm very proud and excited to announce that in fact tomorrow we are starting our first long-term technical training program with the Yashoda Foundation. We are going to be teaching 19 girls from the Telangana region how to use a computer and how to build a website. We've also worked on breaking down CS and making it more accessible to rural communities by overcoming the regional language barrier. While it may not seem like much to you or me, sitting in a rather privileged position, not knowing English can be a massive barrier to anyone who wishes to pursue computer science. The Girl Code to combat this has hosted workshops in Hindi, Marathi and Bengali alongside our regular English ones. We've also worked very hard over the course of this pandemic to make all of our workshops accessible online so anyone can attend them and from anywhere. Particularly, we've devised a special intro to tech workshop, which only requires an internet connection and a device that can connect to the internet to attend. We delivered this in regional languages. Again, this may seem trivial to you or me, but most of the girls we encounter in rural communities do not have access to machines they can write code on. So having a workshop that introduces them to this alien and abstract concept of computer science without actually involving computers is a huge step forward for us. It is our sincere hope that in the near future, we can provide scholarships for funding and equipment to promising students from rural communities who show a real zest for computer science. In just three years, we have grown from excited lunch conversations in my school with Sam to an organization with 90 volunteers all around the world. We have chapters in three countries, namely India, the US and Singapore, and we are constantly expanding to the remotest areas in India. With COVID hitting, we moved all our curriculum online and even started an online community for college-going girls who are already in CS. This was to provide them with a community of like-minded peers to gain mentorship, access to resources, and workshops. In the course of these three years, we have taught 1,600 girls. 1,600 girls. That's roughly five thirty a year since our inception. It's a mind-boggling number to be confronted with. And the ratio it lends, 530 is to two, is perfect to illustrate the large-scale change any of us can affect when determined. 
Those two 16-year-old girls, frantically noting down ideas over lunch, had no idea they would be able to do what they did and hope to continue to do. We all have so much more power and agency than we believe. It's only a matter of taking up charge and addressing problems we see around ourselves. Introspecting internal biases is crucial and approaching problems with different solutions can lead you to doing amazing things you never thought possible. A lot of people come to me and ask me, how did I do it? It's very simple and I'm going to share that secret with you today. All you need to do is just take a pause, sit down, question the injustice you see around you, question your internal biases, and you can be the change you want to see in the world. The journey is not going to be easy. It never is. But let me tell you one thing. The hard work and determination that you put in will definitely bring you wonderful results. That 5.30 is to do ratio is just a jumping off point. Perhaps you could double it or quadruple it. There's no limit. The thing that is key here is the drive and initiative change things that you see around yourself. After all, we're all one of the many wires that make up this patchwork circuit of a world. And it is up to all of us to rewire it to be a better place to live in. Thank you.